Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Luke. You'll probably have seen me before here at the North End. I'm taking over from JP because he's, well, he's eye deep in their baby stuff, baby planning. It's craziness. Anyways, we're here to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly for Aston Villa, despite an unfortunate 2 0 loss. So we'll start with the good for the good, the bad, and the ugly, and that is two things. Number one, player depth. A little concerned with a couple of positions. I'm still a little concerned. Um, we picked up an injury to Maddie Cash. <coughs> Excuse me. Very early on in the game. Not something we want to see because injuries have been a problem and, and is something that we want to try and avoid. However, Ned coming on, playing out of his skin and really showing that despite his young age, there is quality there. And players that we feel can make impressions from the bench as well, which is also an interesting thing to see. Now, the main good here, though, that I want to talk about is Morgan Rogers. When Villa signed him, there was a lot of questions about whether he was good enough. Would he be loaned back out? Was this one for the future? Yesterday's performance single-handedly for me confirmed that this is a player that not is only part of the squad, but is a starting player in that starting level. He was controlled, he was comfortable, he was composed, and he took the game to Arsenal. He strolled past players like Rice, Partey, Odegaard. There was one particular play where he knocks the ball round, uh, I believe it was Rice, budges him out of the way from a negative position, and then wins a foul. To say that Rodgers was our standout player yesterday really, really shines as to how good he is playing and just how much faith I have in this young man. He's strong, he's powerful, he is always trying to move the ball forward, and he's definitely definitely the type of player we're seeing, especially having lost the likes of Doggy and also obviously Musa Diaby. So great positives. Um, the bad, I think we have a lack of depth. I know I was just saying that we have good players in positions, but there are still positions that I feel Villa need to sort out. I'm not convinced that right back is sorted. We've now known and been told that Konza will not be deployed in that position. He'll be deployed as a centre back because that's where he wants to play. And Unai is aligned with that. Ned has got that quality. My question is whether Matty Cash is good enough. And I've questioned this for a while and I'm still not sure. Additionally, there is a little concern still with the centre of the park for me. And I think once we get Bubakar back, we'll be okay. But I would like to see Villa with also an additional goalkeeper reserve because if Martinez gets injured, we know how we feel about Olsen. It's not great. A wing is also a worry. We lose players in those positions. Leon Bailey has had numerous injuries and was a vital player yesterday. And then looking at that bench, who can make an impact? There's a lot of names that have been talked about. We've been talking a lot of names recently. Um, and I think Gibbs White at Nottingham Forest would be an interesting, interesting ask if we could pick him off. Whether they'll sell him, it's unlikely. But I do think we're going to need another attacking option because I'm a little concerned, especially on the wings. The ugly, unfortunately, has to be a leading player, Ollie Watkins. Oli Watkins has been a standout player for us the last couple of seasons. And Unai has worked with him and brought the best out of him. 19 goals last season. I think a total of 35, 36 uh, total goal contributions with assists at the end of the season. A cl get clinical and key player for Aston Villa. The problem is, he has not come back from the England team in the same way that he finished the season. He looks a little slow to balls. He missed numerous opportunities yesterday. One in the first half that was just a glaringly bad kick. And the header, which, although it was a good contact, I feel should have been placed a bit better. Or maybe, maybe he should have taken it with his foot instead. Raya having the game of his life to keep Arsenal in that game. And then unfortunately losing to two pretty good goals. We kind of collapsed to. But Watkins is a problem. The problem with that is obviously 
rotation-wise, again, limited. Do we go with Duran, who has had a, let's say, turbulent uh, couple of months over the summer? Or do we look to bring in another player? Is there someone else that we can bring in? Is there someone else that we can bring in that could do the same job or could do a better job? Duran is a good player. There's no two ways about it. The problem is, I don't know if he's good enough to lead the line for a long longevity. Watkins will come good, but it is an immediate problem right now. We need to work out what happens. Now, do we drop him and give him more time to compose himself, to work, to get back into training? Because obviously he had an extended break given the Euros and the late finish for England. Or do we just continue with him? Because the Watkins yesterday wasn't a player that was helping that 11. We hindered good opportunities. And if we'd taken a lead in that game, the result could have been different. Maybe not, but it could have been. Duran, as I said, we've seen he has quality. He was obviously going to score against West Ham. And what a bet I didn't make there. But is he good enough? And does he have the composure to take that leading position? I'm not so sure. So... A quick recap, positives. Players that were asked to come on did a good job, Ned at right back, I think some of the substitutions look pretty decent, but I am still a little concerned. However, obviously Rogers, standout player, and one really that looks fantastic. And I think he's gonna bag a lot of goals and a lot of assists himself this season, especially assists. Um, the bad, depth, actual depth. We've signed a lot of players. We're seeing them go out on loan. You know, we lost Junior. Now he's gone on loan. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose the other guy who came, the Dougie. I think it was Enzo. Um, because I just don't think they look at him as a, as a player that's good enough right now. And they want to give him minutes elsewhere. So where do we get the backup, the reserves? Mings is, is older. And he's coming back from a second serious ACL injury. I think we have to really cap our expectations there. Con, um, Carlos still not getting a look in. I think there could be a lack of trust in, in him at centre-back. So potentially another centre-back is needed. Uh, a right-back, another wing, someone to attack the wings. I think they, these are key positions that we could really do with. And do we need another strike option to support or help out there? We have Champions League and it's going to add a lot of games. How we handle that as well as the league, time will tell. But for now, thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you guys again. Sorry about the, uh, the weird background. I am currently on a job and I'm moving my head over here because there's light behind me, but what can you do? Ladies and gentlemen, look forward to seeing you again. If you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them. What do you think, Villa fans? Are you concerned or do you take the positives and say, hey, it's a top, top team who are gonna be pushing City for a title. It's not the end of the world. We beat them twice last year. Or was there concern that needs to be fixed? Let us know in the comments. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you again. This is the North End. This is the North End.